Miss People has everyone. So here it is. Here's my tactical breakdown of Patrick Vieira. Now, I just want to say before thinking that the, the, the live stream was clashes. So I really enjoyed it. You know, give me time to be more talkative or more get my thoughts out properly. Um, it's the first time I've ever done a live stream. You learn. But I really enjoyed it. It was really good. The guys and girls were great. They're all class. Shout out to those guys. Uh, yeah, look forward to it in the future if I'm asked back on. But yeah, quality and the spot. It's hard to read the chat, listen, but I saw some support in the chat and legends every single day. Yeah, I appreciate all the support always. It's fantastic. Uh, keep it up, please. <laughs> yeah, let's get into this. So shout out, shout out to all those. Uh, especially Joe for getting me on. What a legend. Um, philosophy. Start with philosophy again. Now, this, and I've done a lot of stuff. I've looked at the Nice stuff and his New York stuff. It's a similar pattern. Seems to start okay. He established a bit of a philosophy, a bit of a belief. There, he's got an aura. That's clear from the players that he has an aura. See, he doesn't react. What happens? He clearly believes in his way. When that doesn't happen, he sits in a way that allows the team that he's with to not really have an identity. Now, this is not a criticism of him as a manager. This is something, I guess, well, I guess it is a criticism, but it's not saying that it will never work. It's something that he needs to work on. And everyone in this world or in the manager, they need to learn, you need to develop. You only do that failure. Now it's having the, the mindset to accept that and move on, right? That's the biggest thing. And we've seen with a lot of managers and a lot of people in this world, including me, I'm terrible for this, is accepting failure and moving on from it. You know, you think you're always right. You've got to learn that you're not. But let's go on to the philosophy. Now, this is some quotes that I got. I'll, I'll put it in the description where I got these from. Now he said, I want to see the team on the front foot. This is his philosophy. He wanted to play possession attacking football. We want to have teams to score more goals. We want to have more shots on target than we used to. But at the same time, mental strength is created. He also stated, adjusting tactics based on the opposition ability, pivotal in having an edge over your in-game opponents, neighbours in the table, sacrifice a preferred playing style. Now, this is interesting, this quote. It's from what I've personally gathered from some Palace fans, some videos made, and some tweets that they said, did this to an extent, but not in the right way. Change his style, but not in a way which saw the team progress, saw the team go backwards. But what he says is right, and what he wanted to do is right, but he managed to establish that once people understood what he was playing, the style he played, and had lost players. Big players as well, to be fair, especially in the place, place of Crystal Palace, lost Gallagher, Zahata injuries. When that happened, he did adapt in the right way. That makes sense. So that's his philosophy. Technically, good football, playing, moving the ball out from the back, using overloads in wide areas. Wrong mentality. That was what he wanted to play. Now, defensive tactics. Fairly simple. Uh, front three, front, it's front four, put three, that's a lie. So it's a four, two, four. When, say, the keeper has the ball and then front four so the midfielder one of the midfielders will go into a front four they'll create a front four they will press the defense high the pivot sitting just behind to alleviate any pressure once that if that pass has been beaten and they can't win the ball up they move into a low block of a four five one creating five across the midfield solid shape then when they win the ball in that low block they then have option width then play the ball out quickly and create overloads on full backs pivot to sit in defenders at times Right, that's the defensive tactic. Now let's get on to the analysis and the video tactics of that. Let's go. So defensively, this is how it will look in, in, in the first situation, the first phase, I guess. As the ball here, it will initially be, a, so I said like a, a 4 four two four kind of thing. Far across the front here in the white, obviously. Uh, the keeper has the ball. So this will be reactive depending on where the ball goes first. Okay, the ball goes three. Simple press here. Simple press here. Aging slightly to try and cut off, as you can see, the line is still there. Try and cut off anything through, not anything across, you know, make them play back to the keeper and then go out the other side. The same far will shuffle across if that's the case. But originally, what you will have is for here, we'll have the nine, ten pushing up along the nine, um, occupying the center backs, him watching this gap to the number eight here. Of the seven again, watching the gap to the seven, their seven, and the full back and the centre back. Then the eleven, similar position, watching the goals through and the winger. So it's quite covered off, and then you've always got the six 
who 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 was James MacArthur for for Palace before his injury. The guy always sitting there, always watching these areas. Three man really was their eight in this field, but the idea of the press deviate that so it did high press. It was high high energy at this point of seasons ago for Crystal Palace, offensively. Now the second thing. So yet we're in a situation where the press has been beaten. They broke it. They broke it out. So now the initial instead of trying to initiate a press throughout the, the midfield third, it's about dropping in shape. A low block, if you want to call it that, dropping into a shape of a four-five-one, the, the 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 ten dropping quickly, so in, in energy from that guy, whoever that is, box to box player, Jeffrey Schlup, for example, for them, a guy who could really get up and down the pitch quickly. Beneath that, um, to create this kind of solid shape here, and defensively, it, it, Alice, you know, their first season, very good. Um, they were very solid. Um, a lot of things in the first season of Alice that Vieira did really well, and in terms of points tally. Um, overall point, most points in the Premier League got up there. Uh, got expected goals was the highest. Goal scored, goals scored, one of the lowest they've ever done. The first season of Petra, Petra Vieira at Palace was really um, it did go wrong. We'll get into that in very soon. So this is the shape. Everyone behind the ball or everyone in a position where they can cut passes out. It's always looking into set passes here. You know, ball to the nine, the six will sniff anything out there. The ten is tight on that guy. Ball backs, it's creating this mid shape. Win the ball here now. The emphasis again be on quickly using wings to exploit in areas of width. Getting the 10 up higher, getting the 8 in here, creating real areas of space after winning the ball back. That's the premise. Possession. It's very, it was very high on possession. Now, what we'll do is we'll go to the next bit. We'll go into individuals needed in this system. Um, and then we'll go on to what went wrong. So yeah, offensive tactics. I know you can't see a little bit. I'll say what it says. So this is offensively, as we've just seen defensively. Short passing, possession-based style. That's what he had, I ideally wanted to do. Aim to create overloads. The centre mids moving out wide. Create overloads in wide areas. Linking play. Attacking fullbacks, vital. You know, having fullbacks who can get up and down the pitch and create you know, overloads. Out wide, overlaps, underlaps, connect with the central midfielders and, and, and wingers to create areas of the pitch to dominate numerically. Right. Typically played a 4 3 3 formation, but this did adapt into 4 2 3 1 with injuries. It's 4 3 3 predominantly that you want to play 4 3 3. Play it from the back, build up with four backs. Either the, the, the original ball is through the centre back. Booting the ball to the winger, good, good kick to the winger, straight to Zaha. Uh, Matt Gahey would often run out with the ball to create an overload in midfield to then progress the ball out wide. Four backs would be the initial batter and they would play the ball out wide or into the centre midfielder who's moved out wide to progress the ball forward. That's the basic offensive tactics. Possession football, creating overloads, a lot of movement. Let's get into the tactics video on that. Yeah, here's, here's the analysis, guys. So. So what I've got, it is the 4-3-3 uh, formation, Re reliance on the importance of these guys in here, their movement is very important, the three midfield, the rotations. Now, it's important that he has one guy who can sit and screen um, in front of the back four to you know create a little screen or someone, a pivot to start the attacks from, to kind of like Phillips did under Bielsa, you know, to, well, no, Rodri, for example, off I was very good at that, Man City. Players like that who can really sit there and just dictate where the ball goes, where to start the movement. And what they do is, if it's in this position, or a centre-back here has the ball, the premise of the centre-back is to obviously keep the ball and play possession-based football. However, if there's an option to have the centre-back who can play a long ball, that's a big aspect of this. One centre-back who can run out with the ball, or one centre-back who can play the ball to create different dynamics, Center back has the ball, play the ball. Can he go early to the winger out here? Obviously, then the reliance on the wingers, the profile of the winger. Zaha. It's a winger who is direct, run at defenders all day of the week, get a cross in or get a shot off. Speedy, direct winger. That's the first move. Is that one on? Then what you do is you create move around that when it's there. Second thought is the centre back here has the ball. Obviously you're always looking, can you play out through midfield? But if not, 
can he run with the ball? That guy, guy here, I can't, you know what I mean? Runs out with the ball, creates more options in the field. You know what I mean? Now, with this, midfield role now is to create overloads on the wings. Whether he runs out with the ball, or whether it's a straight pass from the fullbacks, looking to build up from the fullbacks to the winger. Now, the importance here is these two. Depending on which side it is, and we'll say it's this side, what happens the fullback will attack. So the centre backs give him the ball. These guys will vacate the central midfielder, midfield position, create overloads on the wings. They will join this area to link up play. Fullback then will be progressive and move, create more overloads, problems on the wing. Right? Create 3v1, 3v2s in these areas. Same on the other side. It's the 8 or whatever it is here. They leave the central midfield area, join the attacks to create situations here. Obviously, higher up the pitch as well, depending on where the, the attack has started from. Nine will get involved with good movement as a number nine, quick and sharp and have good movement, unselfish runs and all that. Not, not necessarily a 30 goal season goal scorer, but someone who is selfish in positions and eight runs, create space for these guys out here. Importance is this guy vacate, doesn't vacate. This guy is sitting in the middle, but then obviously, if the counter is on, so you have a three already. That's the premise of the attacking thing. Now, obviously, Gary loves initially love to keep the ball, build up play, whether it's through the fullbacks being aggressive and going forward, centre back looking for that early one out wide, or through the centre back playing out from midfield to create more options in these spaces here for these two guys to be released, then build the play up out here. There are the three options he played. Attacking sense, and we'll get to why it went wrong. I've also just seen as well, um, this is another adaptation of the formation that he originally did do when they had an injury with um, the six who sat there. I think MacArthur was it? Um, yeah, it was MacArthur. What he would do then is Jeffrey Schlupp came in, I believe. This is from a video I've seen, a tactical video. I'll put it in the description. This guy here would then be two pivots, create a number 10 role in here. And this guy would be box to box. He'd be linking up the play all the way through, playing out there, playing through the middle. Slightly different, but the same premise, the same ideas. This is big, and we'll do this, and then we're going to go on to why it went wrong. That'll be the next part. Individual players. Fullbacks are vital. Now, in this system, and a lot of systems you see in, in day and age, you need fullbacks, energy, desire, who are good going forward. Um, but it's also important that they go defensively as well, because uh, you know when they do sit, when the press is beaten and sit in that block, might be a lot of 1v1s out wide, sitting in a block, naturally your force players out wide, teams out wide, 1v1 with the fullback is important. Having fullbacks who can defend, you need you need a complete fullback in that sense. You know? One who can do a bit of everything going forward, good delivery, good energy, and also sit and defend. Box to box midfielder is important, depending on which system they play, but having that pivot player dictate the play in that defensive kind of third play the ball through the midfielder or out wide is important. Um, of course, having any energy in the field to create width, create chances out wide is huge. Quick direct wingers who will be willing to press. Right, you press forward with the front far, the wingers need to be able to press. Of course, this is striker. Quick wingers, Wilfred Zaha, Elise, direct. Perfect wingers for him. Discipline, he's big on discipline. Of course, when you press and re retreat to a low block, Discipline in that transition is vital. So having a player who players who do that effectively is important. Those are the types that I've noted from his sides. Now let's go on to what went wrong. First reason as to why it went wrong was their number. I don't know what number he played, but one of these two guys, Conor Gallagher. They lost Conor Gallagher, um, and that was huge. Um, Conor Gallagher, Gary's first season, was vital in order to transition the ball. And to create these build-ups in the wide areas. And then actually to be in the box and create chances to score. And he scored a lot of goals and got a few assists. And they didn't have that in the second season. They didn't recruit that player. They tried. I think they brought in the Conga. They didn't have the impact that Conor Gallagher had. And to lose a player like that is it's difficult. Um, simply as a team who relies on the build-up from a midfielder to drift wide, create chances, constant energy, box-to-box -box move. not have that guy. A possession based team is a struggle, it will be a struggle. Um, 
they didn't replace him. That's on the recruitment side of things, I guess. And another thing from what I can gather is when they had injuries with key players in key areas, you're talking Wolf Saha, you're talking losing Gallagher, McCarthy, uh, before he left. Oh, is he left? Um, Anderson at centre-back, Gahi and Gahi. Those two centre backs, one who can ping a ball and it is vital for their system to the winger quickly and a guy who can run the ball out. When these guys got injured in this area, build up play was totally different. You had a player coming in who couldn't do the things those players could do. What Vieira didn't do was necessarily adapt in terms of the personnel they need. What he actually did was more pra less pragmatic, sit back more and rely more on a I guess I guess you could say counter team or more of a soak up the pressure, struggle to build up back with players that can't do what you want them to. You know? and what happened was as that developed, it got more and more less attacking, and there was less emphasis on getting the ball forward, and it was more about soaking up the pressure than trying to use individuals such as Eze, Elise, or whoever played at the time. Uh, Create chances and, and he didn't play them both at the same time for that exact reason. He wants to, want to have a more defensive player in this area. And if you've got Elise, Eze, and Zaha playing at the same time, that's three players. That's one less midfielder in that area, like an Eze, for example, who's probably not defensively sound enough for this type of way. Why he dropped him. and But you're losing a lot of creativity. So it, you didn't get the balance right between. Defensive and been attacking it to rely too much on defensive didn't also adapt to the plays he had system that makes sense you know, losing a guy who can ping the ball and not being replacing with a guy who can ping the ball is a problem however what you have to do then adapt bit of formation effective still without sacrificing attack and that didn't happen he sacrificed the attack and didn't seem Find a way to regain it. That you know, they like they did last season. Go to to defensive midfield to then allow Eze on the pitch and create this kind of shape here in the midfield three again. Actually build up from the width. These guys with the energy. Vieira kind of straight up said no. Um, it's down to he doesn't believe he has the players or the depth that this system again. Stubborn. We've seen this dozen coaches in football. You know that from one of the greats, don't we? They're very stubborn, leaving their system, regardless of what personnel they have. They will play the system they believe. Now, if the players are not doing that system, the natural thought is to be more defensive, to get pressure on the defense. But if you do not have the players here, or he doesn't have the players, it's difficult to formulate a system or an identity. Alex lost. Massively in that second season. Just finally on this, what he seemed to do was when they when they adapted uh, and they tried, but they adapted defensively, so they were a lot more solid and defensive at the back. What they do when they had this number ten guy here you know, in a, in, a, in a defensive shape, he has a, it would be Boga wanted that solid solidarity in defence as opposed to being more pragmatic and playing as in. That must seem to be from what I've seen. In it. If there is any Palace fans in the chat, let me know. Very unlikely, but let me know. Was that the problem? Did he not play right players? Did he simply get players wrong? Did he get too many defensive players? Did he not rely on players? Was there a lack of squad depth? Let me know. Those were the problems. Game aside, that really didn't entity which they had in the first side season, and a lot, a lot of fans in the season loved him. He really enjoyed his play from what I've seen online and what I've watched on video. For the most part, some small concerns in there, but for the most part, they had an identity. Yeah, so that's what I thought went wrong. Now, these are my overall thoughts. And what went wrong here is based on Palace. But again, at Nice, there's a lot of other issues there where it ended really bad at Nice. New York was, again, ups and downs, but there seems to be a lot of ups and downs. There is so far in his career, that might change. He might... Adapt, he might learn more in his managerial career, you know, relatively young in that sense. But for a team in Leeds right now who is looking for someone who's proven success, I think accept.
right? Naturally so. Now, what's important, again, and I, I linked him to Vincent Company. Vincent Company, don't get me wrong, wasn't a failure in Belgium by any means. I'd say he was, he wasn't. He did well there. He didn't turn up any trees. He finished fourth and third with Mantelex, could be wrong. Which is very respectable. Well, he wasn't winning the league. He wasn't dominating the play. He wasn't dominating, you know, everything he had. So there's that. And then he absolutely got to dominate the championship. And then you look at Paul Higginbottom, who's also had a lot of failures in his career. He's done well at places, don't get me wrong. Failed at Leeds, failed at some other clubs, did well at Barnsley, did well at Sheffield United now, up until now. And he's second, quite comfortably. So for me, the manager thing is very interesting. Right? Because you have these guys who have also failed, done well and failed. So it's in- it is interesting. It is interesting. It is interesting. Anyway, overall thoughts. That's well, but ends bad. We've been through that. He seems to establish himself well at a club as the players playing for him if he's getting the right recruitment vital depth in his squad as well he's got an injury and he doesn't have the right player in that role you're in trouble he seems to start well and ends bad ends bad at nice ends bad at palace you know, i don't know how it ended at new york but you know, they didn't win anything and he got bad i believe by jesse marsh's uh new york rebels i believe um so yeah that's one thing that worries me Kind of trap players. Now, again, talking about the championship, things at company, practice some players there. It's got those city links as well. Let's not forget about that. <laughs> All the top teams seem to be fighting for these city loans, don't they? Brilliant. Got those city links, though. We'll have good links. Players will say you're in for us or this Southampton. There's potential now. Players will look at Vieira and say, well, I want to play from Vieira, a legendary footballer, right? So there is that, which is a huge thing. Of course, it can be. You still have to get the coaching right. Attracting players is a huge positive in Vieira's aura. He has an aura. Eze, I can't remember the quote, but it said, guy has an aura, an absolute. Stand next to him and you feel it. However, yeah. and I have to be honest, again, I'm trying to be neutral in the sense, good and bad. Has had injuries, yes. Has not had great squad depth. Zaha, for example, when he got injured, the replacement for him brought Eze in or whoever it was they brought in. Well, Hughes got a lot of game time because I tried to adapt it. Didn't have that great squad depth when a player got injured. When, when Anderson got injured, they brought in Tompkins. You know, not the player they need in that sense. That is fair to him. However, at Nice, I don't know. Maybe it's different. But there's, there's, there's things here that are fair enough. He did have injuries all his way. He had a lot of long injuries. I, I'm pretty sure Eze was injured for a while. Zaha was obviously injured for a while. Uh, McCarthy, his first season, getting injured. Anderson getting injured. It's not ideal. Uh, but that it was, it was an aspect. Good original style, as I've said. If he has the right players, starts off well at clubs. And depression from that, which is wrong with either an injury or a lack of depth in a certain area, he doesn't adapt well at this point in his career. Those changes. Losing Gallagher was huge, didn't adapt, didn't change it. That player, had the same style, didn't have the players to facilitate. Then my overall thoughts, it's an interesting one. Of course, obviously, as we spoke about on the show last night, not my number one by any means I have, I want. This is one that, again, there is that risk, a huge risk, given he's not have had uh, consistent success in his career. Had Fairly reasonable success. Fairly reasonable success at times. At Palace, his first season was good in terms of stats, where they finished, in terms of their ranking in the Premier League. Previous years, very good. Something went wrong, and we spoke about what possibly went wrong. Adapt to that. It ended really bad at Nice. And anything at New York. I'm not sitting here trying to just degrade the era. It's, 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 for me, anyway, personally, I think there's potential in his management. I I just think he's at a point in his career now where he needs to stand. He might have to adapt. This is me saying, I can tell Patrick Vieira that. I don't know more than Patrick Vieira. That's my opinion on it. That's just my thoughts on every coach. Adapting is huge. Of course, you believe in the way you play. You have to adapt. Because you will get injured. You will lose players. You don't adapt. You don't have the right players. Football and going constantly for That's an issue for this is just a tactics video. Look, 
Scott Vieira. Oh, I, th I think he's my fourth. Out of the current names, he's probably my fourth on the list above Scott Parker at this point. Um, maybe even below Scott Parker based on Parker's success in the championship. Vieira's not played in the championship. Might work for him, that might not. I don't know. But that's my thoughts. That's my overall video. It's getting on too long now. Let me know what you guys think. Appreciate the support as usual. Uh,